Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really fun pattern. We're going to make the three layer cake quilt. And you know quilters love puns, so I bet you can guess what we're going to use to make this quilt. We're going to make the quilt using this layer cake here. Now layer cakes are 10 inch squares and they come in usually a nice variety of colors. This is called Grunge Hits the Spot, and all of them have these little dots, and we've got almost rainbow colors here. The only other thing we need is a background fabric, and I'm gonna use a solid grunge. I'm not gonna use more of the dots, because I think the solid will look a little bit better. And I want something kind of dark, so we have some contrast, and I think this nice navy will look really good with all of these fabrics. So let's take all of these over to the studio and then let's get everything cut and let's start sewing. The first thing we need to do is open up the layer cake and pick which of the squares we're going to use. We only need 38 and there's 42 in here. So we're going to check and see if any of them look too much like the background and those will be the ones that we don't use. All of these colors will look good. It's This one is almost the same color so we won't use that and I think there's two of that one. We won't use that. There's enough contrast there, enough on all of these. Let's check the the black. That will look good. So I may take out the white because I think that will be pretty stark, but the rest of these should all look good and they all have contrast with our blue here. The next step is to iron everything up, cut the background, do the subcuts on the layer cakes, and we're, since we're using the Cozy Quilt Designs patterns, I can't give you all the sizes, but it's very easy to follow their patterns along and get all the exact sizes that you need. Before we subcut the layer cakes, let me show you something about the pinked edges here. Moda cuts their pre-cuts with a very small pinked or zigzag edge, but they measure from the smallest part, so the, the shortest part, the inside cut there to the other side. That's where the 10 inches is. So that's all you have to remember when you do your cutting. Start measuring from the shortest part. Now that the cutting is all done, the blocks are going to be really easy to stitch together. We're just going to put all of these guys on. And every block is going to be made just like this. Of course, they'll be all different colors, so we will get this really nice colorful look like we've got in the pattern. To sew the block together, let me separate these just a little bit. We're just going to do one on the side, one on the bottom, one on the side, one on the bottom. So I'm going to make this one just as a single block. But once I get going, I'm probably going to chain piece the whole quilt. I always like to make one single block first so that I know everything fits and I know I'm doing things correctly. Now this one's going to go on here and we're going to finger press all the seams to one side. So I'm using a quarter inch seam. And anytime you've got this pinked edge, this zigzag edge here, remember, put your straight cuts, if they're straight, on the inside part of that zigzag. Finger press all the seams away from this square. So every time we do something, we're gonna set it back here and make sure everything fits. Now we're gonna sew this one on here. And before we sew this last strip on, we just need to stitch this block onto one end of it. Now this seam allowance here needs to go that way because this seam allowance is going to the outside and we want this seam allowance going in the opposite direction so that when we put these together, 
they're going different ways and that way you can make them match very easily because they butt right up next to each other. Again, finger press the seams away from the center. Now we're going to also iron it nice and flat. Even though we finger press it and it's pretty flat, it still is a really good idea to iron it and steam press it because that will make all your seam allowances stay exactly the way you want them to go and it makes it really flat and that makes all the next steps even easier. Now we're just going to make the rest of the blocks. All of the blocks are like this. The background color here and here and two different colors here. So I'm going to take all these pieces and stitch up 49 more blocks. I have all the blocks done and I've got my corner and side setting triangles. Now we just need to lay the whole quilt out. So this is going to take a little bit of time, but we're going to start in a corner and we're just going to start laying the blocks until we have a nice pretty layout. And once we get all the blocks into rows, see this is one, I'm not going to leave that there. I'm going to switch around and do another color. Once we have all the blocks laid out, these small corners are going to go in the corner. These bigger triangles are going to go on the sides. So it always takes a little bit of doing, but if you follow your pattern, this is the exact size I'm doing. If you're doing a different size, that'll be in the pattern also. Get the whole quilt laid out and then trade the blocks around till the colors look nice and balanced. I have the quilt laid out. I have all the blocks laid out. And for this one, because there's so many different colors, I just simply laid them all out on the table. Now I can see a couple things that need to be switched. For instance, I don't want both of those grays right there. So this is the easiest pattern to move around because every block is the same. So we can just switch those, stand back up, oh, still got the gray there. Maybe we'll try it like that. And the other thing is, if you look up this way, I've got quite a lot of purple right here all together. So there's not much purple down here and not much green there. We will try switching these. So I'm gonna do a little bit of switching around, stand back, take a look, see if it's balanced. Then I'm gonna double check and make sure all my blocks are laying the same way and I didn't twist any when I was switching around. When we're stitching together a quilt that's on point like this, the rows are not vertical and horizontal. So this is actually the first row. We're just gonna set that aside and make this row. There's our first row. I have my seam allowances pressed away from this block. So you're going to want to follow the pattern because it'll tell you which way to do all the rest of the seam allowances so that they'll be in alternating directions. Now we're going to take this row over, sew it, then we'll sew all the rows, then we'll get the rows sewn together. Now you always want to iron your quilt top before you put any borders on. I've finger pressed all the seam allowances so it's pretty flat, but I'm going to smooth it along the grain line once I get it flattened out, I'm going to iron that section. I usually do no steam first till it looks straight and then steam it. Now we want to trim the edge of the quilt and we are going to trim this one quarter inch away from that point there. So I'm just going to put my clear ruler with the quarter inch line there and the quarter inch line here. And we're not trimming off very much here, but it does get the dog ears. So I'm going to do this all the way around the quilt. I'm using a quilting pattern that's sort of abstract. It's called Wiggle Weave. And I'll show you on the computer here. I'm going to do one row at a time and it's just got some up downs and sideways things. And this won't fight with my patchwork. So that's why I picked this pattern. So 
So there's no flowers, there's no swirls, there's no hearts, there's no, no motifs at all, it's just wiggles. And that works great on the diagonal square here. It doesn't fight with it, it doesn't show up too much, and I think it'll really make the quilt look good. The three layer cake quilt turned out really bright and fun. I love that there's dots in some of the prints and then the accent doesn't have any of the dots and it really frames everything quite nicely. We put a little greenish border and then more of the background for the big border and that frames the pattern so well. It's a simple quilting pattern so it's not fighting with the fun patchwork. When these blocks, they sew up faster than almost any other block I've ever made. So the whole quilt went together in one day. Really a fun pattern. Let me show you what I did with the extra scraps. These were extra pieces that were cut when I cut out my layer cakes. And I just put a four inch rectangle on the edge of each one, sewed them together by moving each strip down an inch, made them into a really long strip, and I just stuck that in the back between my two back pieces. This way, the quilt is completely reversible. You could flip this over, put a couple pillows, or even put this down at the foot of the bed. It would look like a bed runner then. So that's a really nice enhancement to the quilt. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the three layer cake. We hope you enjoyed it. Happy quilting.